All right, our next exercise um, is something that you guys are definitely going to be excited about. Okay, we're going to start looking at attractors, attractor points, um, or other people call it magnets. Um, but what it does is it allows you to create a dynamic pattern using points and curves and stuff like that in order to manipulate how certain things are, are behaving, you know, whether they're extruded or scaled or... Um, you know, the radius of things. So um, what I'd like you to do is um, turn all this stuff off. You can keep working in the same um, definition if you'd like, but we're going to create another square grid. So you could actually just copy this down if you'd like. I'm going to get rid of that. Well, actually, yeah, I'll keep that. Get rid of this. Now, um, I'm going to introduce a different concept to you um, because what I want you to understand about um, the square grid is that it's not always the, the type of information that you want to generate. Um, so there are like other ways of creating intelligent geometry as well, depending on how you want to map that particular element. So. In this case, what I'm going to look at is using the square grid to create rectangles. So, um, well, points, let's see, what are these points? Are they center points? Grid corners. Why do I want to do it this way? Um, okay, well, we'll just do it. So, uh, let's go to... Um, curve, primitive, and we're going to pull a rectangle. And uh, I'm going to plug this into P. So what it's doing is it's creating a rectangle at the center point of each of those um, intersections along the grid. And I chose to do it that way because it's, a little, well, it's basically the same thing as like a divide surface. Um, so it reacts on center points rather than on cells. Okay, so we're creating this geometry. So what I want to point out that's a little different is that for the X and the Y inputs, it actually says it's the dimension of a rectangle in the X direction. So what are we going to put there? Number slider. Okay, let's try it. 0 to 2.0. Put it here, put it there, and let's slide it up. Actually, you can make a larger one. I forgot that my cells are really large. Let's say 0 to um, 10. There. And then start sliding it up. So what's it doing? How is it behaving? Right. Uh, well, the square is getting bigger, but it's tied to that point, but it's only moving in the what direction? Yeah, X and Y direction, positive direction. They're all moving positive. So what I want to point out, though, is that that isn't behaving the way the original grid was showing me, right? It's showing me something that's on the center point. So how do I get it to move both ways? Well, hover your mouse over the X or the Y, and what you're going to see is this little symbol right there. That symbol is the symbol for domain, and a domain is a set of numbers or range of numbers or a range. Okay, so um, basically what it's asking us to do is to create a range and what it's showing you here as an example is negative one to one. So if I want this thing to be a maximum of 10 feet and I want it to be centered on each of these points, then I need to create a domain of negative five to five, yes, exactly, thank you. Um, so under math and under domain, we can do what's called construct domain. And construct domain is going to output a value, in this case it's saying zero to one, and it's going to ask you for a start value and an end value. So plug um, that into X, make a copy, and plug the next one into Y.
actually, we're using squares, so we can just use one. So, um, and then we just have to create a value. So we're going to create a negative five and a positive five. We could do that using two separate panels. Negative five. It's going to be a and five. It's going to be b. And then I can plug this into x and y, and it's going to give me squares. It's kind of hard to see what's going on, but like the first square is here, right? Around the origin. That's uh, right here. Um, but I want it to be more intelligent. So how can I do this differently? Anybody? Yeah. I can create a slider and use a negative. We can actually say 0 to 5 on the slider. Um, actually, let me do a 0 to 5.0 so it's a little more fine-tuned. 0 to 5.0. Get rid of this. The positive number is going to go in the end of the domain, and we're going to go under math and operators, and we're going to pull a negative. Math ops. Put it in there. So now that is going to behave the same way because this is the same number, but it's just a negative version of that number. Negative 1.1, positive 1.1. This was math domain. Curve primitive, right? Yeah, curve primitive. Curve primitive. All right. So um, this isn't really the the part of this um, overall like attractor points thing that I wanted to show you, but I wanted to show you most importantly like how the domain feature. Uh, works when it's just like a numerical range uh, since we were talking about domains yesterday. Um, so I'm going to close this video and then move into the attractor points.